deal with consumption externalities. That is a market failure on the consumption side of a, of a market. I have three goals in, in the, the short lecture. One is to do the basic analysis of a consumption externality, a negative consumption externality in this particular case, and to apply this in an import competing sector. So, for example, secondhand smoke can cause health problems for other people near the smoker. Imports might, might also occur in the cigarette market so that we have a domestic consumption externality in an imported product. It's not that imports are a problem per se, it's the consumption of cigarettes that causes the, uh, the health problem. And we'll consider a couple of different government responses to this negative externality. One, a trade intervention, in this particular case a tariff, or secondly, a domestic intervention, a, in particular a consumption tax that deals with the market failure more directly. So from a purely analytical standpoint, what, what we're going to use is the divergence between the marginal benefit of consumption from a private standpoint and the social marginal benefit, which is going to be less. So in this particular graph, the demand curve for the product is given by the, this black line that reflects the marginal benefit of consumption for, a, uh, for domestic consumers. So that the first unit uh, that is consumed has a private marginal benefit equal to the height of the demand curve. The marginal benefit from a social standpoint is less. And that vertical distance between the two is the marginal consumption externality. So the social marginal benefit of the first unit is less than the private marginal benefit. So what happens when we face a particular price? Well, the domestic consumer is going to uh, consume where the price P1 equals the marginal benefit of consumption. In this particular case, pull a number out of the, the air, 30 units. From a society standpoint where the marginal benefit of consumption e equals the price is going to be with fewer units consumed, say 20 units. So with the negative consumption externality, too much is consumed. So let's take a look at that from another standpoint in order to look at the total market inefficiency associated with this externality that is with no intervention by the government. So the, from the private consumer standpoint, what they perceive their benefit is of consuming 30 units instead of 20 units is this area ABC. It's the area under the private demand curve. These 10 units, which are excess consumption from society standpoint, have that benefit to the uh, consumers. It only costs the price times the quantity, area AB, for consumers to actually purchase this. So from a consumer standpoint, they get more benefit than it costs to buy the product. It's this consumer surplus, if you will, of, of area C. From society's view, the benefits of consuming these <clears throat> excuse me, same 10 units is the area under the social marginal benefit curve. That's area A. From society's standpoint, what it costs to buy this product is less than the total social benefit associated with that. So that you have a consumption inefficiency, too much consumption, measured by this area B. That is the deadweight loss, the inefficiency associated with consumers making decisions based on their own costs or their own benefits of, of consumption rather than the social benefits. So if we take this into the import market of a small country, we will depict it this way. 
Marginal benefit of private consumption, again, exceeds the marginal social benefit. From society standpoint, Q3 is the optimal. Q2 is what consumers decide to buy. The cost of importing this excess amount of consumption from foreigners is AB. It's the world price multiplied times that quantity. That's how much society gives up in order to consume or import these units. The social benefit, the area under the social demand curve, area A, so that we have a market inefficiency of B. In this particular instance, imports ought to be Q1 to Q3. They are, in, in fact, Q1 to Q2 without the government intervention. There's too much consumption of this good that happens to be imported in this particular uh, instance. So, if the government knows what this externality actually is, how much it is, and can then pick a tariff equal to that marginal externality effect, the price could be raised to PW plus T, consumption would fall to Q3, and the increase in the price associated with the tariff would reduce consumption to the socially optimal level. You, in other words, you eliminate the market inefficiency by a properly chosen tariff. The problem is that the increase in the price in the domestic market also encourages more domestic production. Domestic producers see this higher price because of the restricted imports, decide to produce Q4 instead of Q1. These extra units produced domestically cost society the area under the supply curve, that's G plus H. The cost of importing that same amount was H. So that what you have is a cost of inefficient domestic production equal to G. So here's the dilemma. We've raise the prices through the tariff, we've gotten the right amount of domestic consumption and essentially gained back, if you will, area B, but we've created another distortion on the production side of the market by increasing the price. Whether or not this is a good plan for society as a whole depends on the relative size of B versus G. And there's no guarantee that that is the case. It could very easily be an outcome where the inefficiency of increased domestic production exceeds any of the efficiency gains on the consumption side, or vice versa. There's no way to know a priori whether or not this is a good plan. It depends on the empirical outcomes of these two effects, of the benefits of reducing consumption compared to the inefficiencies associated with increased domestic production. That is because the tariff creates unintended side effects of increased domestic production. Now instead, the government could impose a tax on consumption of this good from wherever you buy it, whether it's from a domestic source or whether it's a foreign source. Essentially, the consumption tax will shift the marginal benefit from the private standpoint down to the social benefit if that tax is properly chosen. So if you set that tax equal to the marginal externality effect, you will see that consumption falls to Q3. In this instance, market inefficiency is eliminated, but without creating an incentive for domestic producers to produce more. All of the effects are on the consumption side because that's what you're taxing. So you do get the right level of domestic consumption. Of course, there is a transfer between domestic consumers of this product and the government. But the standard 
approach that we've been taking is to assume that a transfer has no effect on national welfare. So, yes, indeed, there are tax revenues raised. That has no national welfare effects. But what you do see is reduced consumption of this good that creates these other problems. But no rise in the domestic production as with the uh, tariff. So, applying this in practice is sometimes difficult. And it really has to do with knowing the, the original externalities, the original uh, effects of this policy. Knowing the level of the original social costs, rather than benefits as it says here, is key. So, one way to do this is to have an other methods to internalize the externality. So that, in this example, if consumers are become aware of and react to the negative external effects of cigarette consumption, that can reduce the consumption by consumers' own behavior if there's sufficient information about these social costs. Now, whether or not people will react to that is, an, is another question, but that is a possibility. But it's hard to figure out exactly how much to intervene. Regardless of what the, the simple graph shows, getting the tax rate right is difficult.